What happened to Vivian Garrett after she disappeared from her comfortable four-bedroom home the night of January 1st? For residents of Abbott's Landing, a small town that nestles up on the Chesapeake Bay and was once the home of Vivian Garrett, the answer is still unclear. One year ago today, Garrett vanished, baffling family members and both local and state police. She said nothing to her children or her husband. Friends say she didn't seem unhappy or panicked. In the media circus that followed in the wake of the investigation, reporters never uncovered a secret lover or a desire to leave her family. But no conclusive physical evidence was ever found. The investigation began on January 4th of the previous year, when a family member alerted police that Garrett had not been seen for three days. Her car, a blue 2005 Nissan Altima, was found abandoned in Willow Creek Park two days later. The disappearance was considered suspicious, since Garrett was said to be a dedicated mother to her four children and had no history of erratic behavior. The woman's husband, biology professor Robert Garrett, was originally arrested a month after her disappearance after a breakdown in his office. In statements to the police, he declared that his wife was gone for good and would never come back. Although Mr. Garrett's responses were often muddled and contradictory, he was released without charge. Abbott's Landing police declined to respond to questions, saying, at this time, we have no information to add to the investigation. Violet sings when she washes the dishes. If I'm drying them, then sometimes I'll harmonize. She'll go. Down to the river. And it sounds like. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way. Mom was the worst baker. She nearly burned the house down once because she set the oven to 500 degrees instead of 350. Sometimes I still find black and cookie pits down there. Last February, I came downstairs one morning and all the photos were gone from the fridge. The one of Merle eating ice cream on her first birthday. The one of all of us on Halloween five years back. The one of mom and crab as a puppy. Like they'd never been there. We have too many onions. I should make something with onions before they go bad. Onion soup? Onions and sausage? Just feed everyone straight onions. Ugh, no one's cleaned the microwave in ages. How do I let it get like this? A family member alerted police that Garrett hadn't been seen in three days. Yeah, that was me. If only he could remember to pay taxes on time. It was sweet of my uncles to send Christmas cards. Things have been a little awkward between them and dad ever since dad was arrested. Vi and I went to live with our uncle Thomas. Merle and Gus went with uncle Elijah. We didn't come back until August. I don't think dad really knows how to thank his brothers for taking us in. There's great-great-grandma Prue. Well, well, great-great-great-great-great-great... Great, 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 okay, I don't, I don't remember how many grades exactly. Maybe she looks so pissed because no one can ever remember. Or maybe because she has no teeth? No one really eats in here now. 
We mostly just take our plates into the living room and watch game shows. When I have my own dishes, they'll be pale white and always washed and put away. Sometimes I wonder how rich you have to be to eat off your porcelain instead of just putting it in a glass cabinet. A feather? Inside? I like the lighting in here. It always makes my eyes look bright. Like I know something that no one else does. Sometimes Merle catches me staring in the mirror and makes fun of me. Gus needs new shoes every few months, it seems like. His feet are growing faster than dandelions. There are still blood stains there from the time I tripped and hit my head on the front walk. That was 10 years ago. That's Gus's backpack. Argus Robert Garrett. When he was really little, we used to tell him he was adopted, that he'd been bound on an abandoned pirate ship and that the pirate king and queen would come back for him someday. His initials were the clue they'd left. Funny, he's the least pirate-like out of all of us. I told Merle not to eat her snack outside the kitchen. She always gets it everywhere. Great Blue Heron. Scientific name, Ardea Herodias. You know what's strange? The Herodias was the wife of Herod, mother of Salome, the one who asked for John the Baptist's head on a platter. Why do people always link birds and strange women? Hey, Dad. Oh, Lena. I didn't realize you'd come in here. What's going on? I found this feather on the floor. Do you know how it got here? You... what? A swan feather was lying there. Just like that. Maybe there are birds getting into the house. Don't be silly. There'd be plenty of evidence other than a feather if we had a bird infestation. And something as big as a swan. How did it get in? It, it, knocking politely on the back door. That all makes sense, I guess. And you don't think it's foul play? Ugh. Don't mention that to Gus. He's been trying to solve crimes up in his room all morning. Something about his, his yogurt being stolen from the fridge. In any case, I better get back to my reading. The Cornell Lab of Ornithology just released a study on the mating habits of the northern Bob White, and I have it right here, open to page one. You know what today is? January 1st. A Saturday. Yes, I know what it is. Do you think she'll come back? If she were coming back, she'd have done it by now. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be harsh. I know you all don't necessarily think that way. She's gone, Lena. And she isn't coming back. How can you be certain? 
because I knew your mother better than anyone. I just know there were some things from her old life that she missed too much. I, I'd, I'd like you to understand, but you wouldn't. Not now. Why not now? I'm 17, Dad. What is it you think I can't handle? You would never believe me. You can't know that until you tell me. No. They ran an article in the paper about it. Did you see it? Oh, no. I, I don't really read the paper so much anymore. Why don't you just recycle it? Your siblings don't need to see that. If that's what you want. Thank you. That's good of you. Don't you think they're old enough to know what people have said about Mom? About us? I'm sure they already know. Their friends at school probably talk about it constantly. Haven't you noticed that they don't have very many friends? Violet can be off-putting. Gus is so quiet, and, and Merle, she's only ten. She has plenty of time to make friends. Maybe you have a point. How was work today? It went fine. The students are still out on Christmas break, so it was just me this morning, entering migration data. We've had 50 of our tagged swans return so far. That's unusual. Far fewer than normal. They look so beautiful out there in the bay, but sad, like they're waiting for something. Yes, I've always thought that. That's why I prefer to track the swan population, and nothing like black-headed gulls or Harris's sparrows. But I'm sure you didn't want to talk to me about sparrows. Are you in the lab so much because it keeps you from thinking about, you know, other stuff? Uh, well, working hard certainly does keep the mind busy. And I've always liked to be busy, you know that. Of course. It's what makes you so good at what you do. But what about us? Lena, I know you mean well, but please understand. This year has been so hard. I'm trying to deal with it the best that I can. Do you see that? You're a father, not just a professor. And I take both roles very seriously. Let's not pick a fight. I'll think about what you said. I'll let you get back to work. Thanks. Oh, oh, before you go, have you seen my phone? I think I've, I've lost it yesterday. Isn't your spare office key still missing, too? Yes, it is, but... Wait, are you trying to say that I misplace things easily? That's exactly what I'm saying. Ah, well, you may have a point. Yes? The blue mug is left over from a trip to Colonial Williamsburg. Dad bought it from one of the gift shops. We used to go every year until Gus threw up on the shoes of a poor guy dressed up as an 18th century candle maker. Mom's best friend found that chair for $10 at a garage sale in Norfolk and drove it all the way here for her 38th birthday. That's how Sasha is. Real loyal, real obstinate. Hmm. Looks like someone was watching The Avengers 8, Condiment Man versus Squirrel Girl. I guess they figured anybody could get a movie after Ant-Man. National Geographic Atlas of the World, Streetwise Rome, Atlas of Cursed Places. 
I don't know where she got them, but Mom collected all these map books, mostly of places she never visited. When I won the Jefferson Book Award last year, UVA gave me the quotable Jefferson. It's like a magic eight ball, but with Thomas Jefferson. Open it up to a random page, and instead of outlook good or not likely, you get our liberty can never be safe but in the hands of the people themselves. Nifty, right? It's locked for a reason, Lena. That's my space. Merle's the one getting all the first place ribbons now. I used to think I was good, but she's the next Missy Franklin, I swear. It's January 1st. The deadline's tonight. All my applications are done. They just have to be submitted. Shouldn't forget about that. This is for the linguistics mini-unit we're doing in my Spanish language class. We were supposed to take a common word and find as many different translations for it in various languages as possible. I chose home. Click your heels three times. I guess it's an open secret that none of us were living with Dad for a while. Oh my god. Vi used to have problems wetting the bed. When she stopped doing it, Mom celebrated by taking us both to get new sheets. Vi picked out these. It's funny, this would be the last pattern she'd pick now. I try to remember to put an instrument case sticker in her stocking every Christmas. Like, real women play the violin. Or, in case of emergency, save the violin first. They're cheesy, but she likes them, I think. Back when people still had Walkmans, Violet used to listen to a CD of Major Parsley's Lonely Livers Club 
every single day. She'd wear headphones, but she'd turn up the volume so loud that I could hear every word. I think I probably still know all of them. I got through this one in Spanish. Arabic? Well, that's still work in progress. Mom never stopped us from reading any of her books. Which was why I first discovered what sex was from reading Harun al-Rashid and the Three Slave Girls in 1001 Arabian Nights. <laughs> oh, hey, okay. it's our Celtic horoscopes. Mom had us all get these done a few years ago. She was very into them for a while. I think horoscopes are a pile of goose poop. These freaked me out when I was little. The women are so sad, but in such similar ways. All that dark wavy hair and their big shocked eyes and the way they're looking so intently at something. I haven't seen Dad sleep here for months. This bed might as well be a part of an Ikea ad for all the use it gets. Imagination will often carry us to worlds that never were. But without it, we go nowhere. <laughs> That's one of Dad's favorite Sagan quotes. Dad's the littlest brother. Elijah's the oldest, and Thomas is in the middle. Grandma raised them all by herself, so they were always close, but I don't think my uncles ever expected to have to do what they did for my dad this year. They gave all of us places to live after dad got arrested. It's still a little weird to be back here and not sharing a room with my cousin at Uncle Thomas's house. When we were little, Vi and I would play sardines with our cousins. This used to be my favorite hiding spot. I'd curl up, cover myself with dirty shirts and dresses, and try so hard not to make a sound. It always worked. I haven't been in here since she disappeared. It's so strange. It smells like her. Sometimes I wish Dad would dress the way I imagine an Oxford professor looks. Nice tweed blazers, snappy corduroy pants, that kind of thing. But khakis are fine too, I guess. Every year, Mom would get Dad an ugly tie for Christmas. It started as her just having bad taste. Then it turned into a tradition. This year, I bought him an ugly tie. I think he almost cried. All Dad really needs is a toothbrush and a razor. Mom always had the driest skin. It was like she was so delicate that the wind sucked the moisture right out of her. Hard at work in the pursuit of scientific discovery, huh? I'm being a forensic scientist. 
That means I solve crimes. <laughs> it's really cool. Tell me what kind of case you're solving. You know how much I love strawberry yogurt, right? And how I've told everybody not to eat it? Well, this morning I went to get some out of the fridge, but there was only one left. And yesterday morning, there were three. I thought that if I sprinkled fingerprint powder over the last yogurt and figured out which prints weren't mine, then I'd know who ate the rest. That's brilliant. You'll be the next Sherlock Holmes, I know it. <clears throat> it's elementary, my dear Watson. That was in one of the Sherlock movies. So who did it? I'm not sure yet. See, I have to get fingerprint samples from everybody else. I got Dad and Vi to give me samples this morning, and, and they didn't match. So it was either Merle or it was you. It was me. So it was you! I had a feeling. Merle doesn't even like yogurt. But why did you eat it? We ran out of blackberry jelly a few days ago, so I couldn't make toast and just ate yogurt instead. Sorry, bud. I should have asked. It's okay. I still get to solve a mystery. I wonder what other ways I can use these fingerprints. I want you to stop and make sure you did all your winter break homework for when you go back to school Monday. But it's all done! It was just a really easy chapter in the math workbook. Still, I want you to double check, okay? What else is up? Are you trying to talk to me about Mom? How did you know? Logic. I already saw the article in the paper this morning. Dad's been even more distant than usual, and your voice is all funny, like you're not sure about something. And those three things make me think that you want to ask me about Mom. <sighs> you're right. Sometimes you amaze me, Gus. Thanks. What did you want to ask, specifically? How do you feel about her being gone for a year? I'm fine. I was really sad earlier this year. Now I'm better. But I don't think we'll ever see her again. Fact. Her car disappeared and was found abandoned somewhere else. Fact. She was sad sometimes. Fact. She left for days at a time and would come back crying. Fact. After Dad, there haven't been any suspects. What I think... I think she killed herself. You may have a point, but you were thinking about that? You think I don't realize that people do... that when they're not happy? I'm little, and I'm quiet, and sometimes... People forget about me, but you know I'm not dumb. You're not dumb, but you're being a pessimist. I'm not trying to be a pessimist. This is just what I've thought about. I understand. It's all right. You're the most like her, you know, out of all of us. She loved us. She was always thinking about whether we were happy and safe no matter what. Yeah, I remember. You know the painting of hers downstairs? The one she did herself? I've stared at it for hours so that it's in my brain. So that I'll never forget what she looked like. That portrait is creepy. 
I definitely wouldn't stare at it that long. Well, that was just her style. You're right, it's a little weird for a portrait, but a lot of artists made pretty weird self-portraits too, right? It can be good when art makes you feel strange. Whatever you say. So are you ready to go back to school? I guess I am. We're going to start learning about ecology and local food chains and science. And we're reading To Kill a Mockingbird for English over break. I finished it yesterday. It's awesome. I hear a but. I just... Well, there aren't a lot of people I talk to at school. It's a little lonely, honestly. I know that's hard, but who needs friends when you have family, right? Kind of like how Scout and Jem have each other in To Kill a Mockingbird. But then, they also have Dill. I don't have any friends like that. Remember that crystal growing kit I got for my birthday? All the pictures on the box are of two people making the crystal solution, and smiling and laughing. So, I wanted someone else to do it with. I think I can find time in my busy schedule to give you a hand. Let me page my secretary and ask her to fit it in. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Then I'll look forward to it. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Keep up the good detective work, all right, Dr. Garrett? <laughs> you bet I will. Grandma made that for Gus's 10th birthday. She'd never say it, but Gus is her favorite. None of the rest of us ever got quilts. A few nights ago, Gus asked me if I wanted to look at constellations with him. He showed me Cassiopeia, Orion's Belt, Lynx. Apparently, Lynx isn't even named for the animal. The guy who made up the constellation said that anyone who wanted to see it should have eyes like a lynx. I guess Gus does. Acne all clear for teens. But Gus only has, like, two pimples. Oh well. Anything's enough to make that kid feel self-conscious. Acne all clear for teens. But Gus only has, like, two pimples. Oh well. Anything's enough to make that kid feel self-conscious. A few months ago, I did a load of laundry for Gus and decided to fold it and put it away just to be nice. I found a glossy photo at the bottom of his shirt drawer. But it wasn't Megan Fox, or Selena Gomez, or a Playboy centerfold. It was Jillian Anderson from The X-Files, carrying a gun and looking badass. It's also very pink, but it suits her. What's this? I'd almost forgotten about Fräulein. Dad said Merle could have a new doll if she played this educational computer game that was supposed to teach German. I think the only words she remembers are Schwimmbecken and Schwester. And Fräulein, of course. When did she start wearing this? I didn't take her to get it. Dad would rather lie on a bed of nails than take Merle bra shopping. 
I guess one of her friend's moms must have. Hmm. Number four. Her lucky number. <sighs> Merle never makes her bed. I guess she doesn't have time for it. She's too busy dreaming up crazy ideas or running through the woods to who even knows where. Hey, it's my old copy of Matilda. I used to have nightmares about Miss Trunchbull. It's locked for Mom kept an herb garden here. She might have been a terrible cook, but we always had fresh basil for our pasta. And fresh rosemary and lavender, and mint. Bluebirds aren't very common, but one year we had a bluebird build her nest in our birdhouse. Lady bluebirds aren't blue all over, like the males. They're grayish orange with little tips of blue on the wings like gloves. We never really knew what kind of dog crap was. One of Dad's co-workers' dogs had a litter of puppies, and Mom got a look at a photo of them. <laughs> well, that was it. Crab came home with us a month later. This thing is so stuck it won't budge. I'll need something to oil the latch. WD-40, maybe? Do you know where the WD-40 is? WD-40? Why? The gate's stuck. It's been sticking for a while, but someone must have slammed it and gotten it jammed. Oh, I hadn't noticed. Huh. You could check the kitchen. It might be in there. Or in the hall closet upstairs. Although it wouldn't surprise me if Gus had it in his room for one of his experiments. Good places to start the search. Thanks, Dad. I'll let you get back to work. There it is! What's underneath the WD-40? I didn't know Dad kept a journal. Maybe there are more parts lying around.
That should do it. Most people don't even bother locking their bikes on the rack. Why would you? Everyone knows Chris Langley has the red mountain bike, for example, and Ari Shamimi has a lime green cruiser. If the bike goes missing, then turns up in a nearby pawn shop, well, people figure things out. In the summer, this lot would be filled up with people coming to fish or sunbathe or play pickup soccer games. The crowd drops off during the winter. People huddle in their houses, like rabbits, sort of. The map is useful for tourists, I guess, but most people who are from here know to orient themselves using the bay, like a liquid compass. Simmonses are like the Rockefellers of Aylin County. Or they used to be, anyway, 50 years ago. Most of them have moved away now, I think. Someone dropped their... Wait, isn't that Dad's? It was mostly my mom's friend Sasha who got this wall put up in honor of Mom, but so many people have added stuff to it. You usually see memorials for people who have died, but... Mom never was a churchgoer. Still, the sentiment's nice. That sounds just like him. They hold camps here in the spring and summer so that kids can learn about food chains and wildlife preservation. Kids of volunteers got to go for half the regular price, so we all went every summer until we aged out. Mom would pack us a lunch, and we'd eat it here with all the other kids. Always the same thing, an apple, a clementine, and a PB&J. She was creative with plenty of stuff, but not packed lunches. I can't believe it. They left the door unlocked. The storm last night must have blown it open. I think Mom said this used to be one of the outbuildings that belonged to Tintagel, the Simmons estate. They repurposed it to be volunteer headquarters. It's not that big, but there are never very many volunteers. In my expert opinion, these were once Snickerdoodles. I bet Ginger made them. She's a fantastic baker. Sasha, the volunteer coordinator, calls all the volunteers inside for lemonade and cookies during the afternoon. That's why I always liked her when I was younger. If you come in at least one day a week, you get a cubby here to keep your gardening gloves and your water bottle. I guess they never got around to cleaning mom's out.
She always bought organic bug spray an aromatherapy blend, not anything with DEET. This one had rosemary, lavender, cedarwood, and lemon eucalyptus oil. I wonder if it actually worked. Another part of Dad's journal. Did Mom put this here before she disappeared? This was a gift from mom to the volunteers. It's her favorite poem. All Yeats is fairies, glimmering midnights. Man, she loves that stuff. That's where they keep all the equipment. Rakes, hose, trash pickers, wheelbarrows, that kind of thing. The water always tastes a little bit like iron, a little bit like blood. The bathrooms are the size of porta potties, but at least they have soap. Littering is still one of my worst pet peeves. Probably because I'd have to pick up trash with one of those litter sticks whenever I volunteered with mom. Do people have any idea how annoying it is to pick up 50 energy bar wrappers in a row? Littering is still I-M-A-G-E Good Spooky S-P-O-O-K-Y Right Mistook M-I-S-T-U-K Try again Oh, M-I-S-T-O-O-K Very nice, that's all of them I think you're ready for your quiz. Crab, sit. I fed you already. Mommy, is it true you didn't always know how to read? Well, none of us are born knowing how to read. Yes, but I mean, you didn't know how until you were older. Who told you that? Daddy mentioned it. He was right. I had a learning disability when I was younger. Like dyslexia? Yes, but worse. And no one gave you special help? No. Not where I was from. Where are you from? <coughs> what the? Is this what Merle was using the recording device for? Mom and Dad used to bring us here every Sunday when we were younger. 
All the other families would be at church and we'd be out here playing with crab and swinging from the monkey bars until we fell. I always forgot about everything else when we were doing that. This place could use some new equipment. You're not supposed to be out here by yourself. I was bored though. No one wanted to do anything with me. It's okay. I get why you came out here. Yeah, I thought you might. Gus doesn't get it. Maybe Vi does, but she never talks to me anymore, so I don't know. It's nice out here. All open and spread out, like a cloud. Like a cloud. That's a good image. Of course it is. I said it. Oh, well, pardon me. I didn't realize I was speaking with the most original voice of our time. So, are you ready for your next swim meet? Duh, we're gonna kick the other team's butts. I'm gonna be a and then they'll be like, <laughs> after all, they don't call me Sharknado for nothing. They call you Sharknado? Yeah, it's my team nickname. I picked it after that movie. You know, the one with the sharks and a tornado. Who let you watch Sharknado? Vi did, while she was babysitting once. Vi lets me watch all the cool movies, like The Sixth Sense, which Vi says was made by Mr. M. Shy... Shyla... Shyla... La, la, la. You know, I used to be just as good as you on the swim team. Yeah, I've seen your ribbons and stuff. How come you don't do swim team anymore? Oh, swim team was never something I wanted to do forever. I was just a really great swimmer. I want to do it forever, though. I like getting in the water. It feels all slippy slippery on my skin. Maybe you'll keep thinking that way, and maybe you'll change your mind as you get older. Who knows? Oh, okay. Is it like how you used to be able to hear birds talking, but now you can't? I could never actually hear any birds talk. That was just my imagination, and yours. But I'm curious. What do they tell you? Little things, mostly. Chickadees talk about the weather, whether it's going to rain or not. Ducks talk about people food and whether anyone will feed them, and where they'll get it. Sometimes I hear owls at night. The owls go, hoo, hoo, but what they're really talking about is hunting. Seeing a mouse and swooping down and... Bam! They make it sound so yummy. Yes. I remember. Do you remember what today is? Today? It's the first day of the new year! Why? <laughs> Did I have chores to do today? This day last year is when Mom disappeared. Have you thought about it at all? No. You mean you don't think about it ever? I just... don't like to. Not having a mom anymore is weird. What do you think happened to her? Merle? The birds say things. Maybe she... Maybe she what? Sometimes, I see her, by the shore, here, at the park. I believe you. Thanks. Explain to me what you mean. You know how there are always swans swimming near the beach here? Well, 
She's one of them. You mean she's actually a swan? Yep. Merle, you just thought you saw her. I don't want you to lie to yourself. It's better to look at what's real. You don't get it. I guess not. It's okay, Lena. You're older. You don't know what I mean. Do you think she'll ever come back? Duh. She could be dead. Don't say that, Lena. That's mean. She isn't dead. I'm going to go, okay? But I'll come talk to you again later. When we were little, Mom made Violet and me sign up for the kids' soccer team because she thought it would be good for us. We just sat on the sidelines and made daisy chains. All the teams in the local kids' soccer league are named after birds. Merle's is the Pocket-Sized Pelicans. They should fire whichever coach picked that name. People say that the woods around here are haunted by a witch who was burned at the stake in Elon County. I looked it up though. No one was ever killed for being a witch in Virginia. She disappeared? Maybe it's worth asking around about her. Dad might think it's weird if I ask, and Violet and Merle probably wouldn't know anything, but Gus might know. Merle's right. One of them is a lot closer. Dad told me that every year, the swans migrate from the high tundra on the northernmost shores of North America all the way to here. It's about 4,000 miles. There's so much better travel than anyone realizes. It's incredible what animals are capable of when they migrate, like monarch butterflies. I heard that they fly over the Great Lakes because there used to be a mountain there, and they remember the mountain, even though it's not there anymore. I wonder what it would have been like to be the first people to see the shore. And what was the weather like? Cold and gray like today. Or green and easy and full of promise. Dad said that it used to be a lot easier to catch fish along this strip of shoreline. But fish kills have made it difficult. Last year, over a hundred dead men Hayden washed up along here. They smelled terrible. wouldn't happen to know anything about a diary of dad's floating around here, would you? Diary? What? No. I'd really like to have a look at it, Gus. If you do have it. Well, I don't. I didn't even know dad kept a diary. <laughs> Gus, please. I... Oh, all right. Look under my bed. There are some pages there. You can read them, but give them back when you're done. Where did you find them? They were 
in Dad's briefcase. And they looked interesting, so I took them. Are you going to tell him? No, but I bet he's worried about where his papers went. Well, yes, he probably is. But I wanted to see if I could understand him better. Mostly I just found research papers he was planning on reading, but this... This helps me understand who Dad is. Then I can analyze his motives. His motives for... Oh, never mind. I'll just read it. Thanks for telling me, Gus. I appreciate it. No problem. Amateur detectives always help each other out, right? <laughs> hey, Gus. Got a question for you. Do you know anything about Bernadette Simmons? Bernadette Simmons. That name sounds familiar, but, hmm. Can you tell me some more? She lived at Tintagel in the 1910s. Oh, her. Yeah, now I remember. The beach at the park is named after her, isn't it? That's right. Well, yeah. I do know a little. I checked a book on Avon County history out of the library last year. Did you know that in 1869, crabs rained out of the sky? Seriously? They'd been swept up by a freak tornado, then deposited on the town. The book said that everybody thought it was the apocalypse. <laughs> Raining blue crabs. <laughs> anyway, Bernadette Simmons. Henry Simmons married her after he'd gotten rich and started building Tintagel. He just showed up one day with her and was all, This is my wife, everybody! Which was weird, because no one could figure out where she was from. You'd think Henry Simmons would marry a Rockefeller cousin or something, but no. He married Bernadette. Apparently, people in Abbott's Landing started thinking that she was a witch from New Orleans because she was so strange. And she had a bunch of miscarriages. Then, she just disappeared. The case was never solved. Doesn't that sound familiar? A little, I guess. Why'd you want to know? I thought it might have something to do with Mom's case. Maybe, but probably not. Just because the cases sound similar doesn't mean a disappearance that long ago had anything to do with Mom. If you looked harder, you could probably find plenty of people who disappeared under similar circumstances. But Abbott's Landing has never been that big. Don't you think that if there were other unsolved disappearances, people would know? In a place like this? If everybody, even me, knows that Sarah Beth Willis had to go to rehab because she got drunk too much, there's no way that anyone could keep something like a disappearance quiet. This place has been around for a while, though. People forget things. Uh, how did you find out about Sarah Beth? Someone told me at school. That's how everybody finds out about everything. I guess. All right. That's all I wanted to know. I'll talk to you in a little bit. There it is.
You were looking for this, right? You found my phone. Oh, oh thank God. I was afraid I dropped it down the sink again, or that I... Wait. Where did you find this? It was out in Willow Creek Park. I was afraid of that. Why were you out there? It's frigid today. <clears throat> Never mind that. Just tell me. Did you look at the text messages? I did read them. Lena, why? I wanted to make sure the phone was yours. You figured that out quickly, I'll surmise. I mean, there are two texts for me, which I remember writing. Who is Sarika Bakshi? She's my co-worker in the lab. Sarika's a bit of a hard ass. Dad! I mean, difficult to work with. Why were you texting Sasha Williamson? She texted me first. Were you visiting the memorial wall again? I was. But I, I just wanted to see what everyone was saying about her, what they were leaving on the wall. What do you think when you look at it? The wall, I mean. I feel this deep, aching sadness. Like a hole's been torn open inside me. There are times every morning when I feel that way. When I'm waking up and I realize what's real and what's not. Anyway, I'm sorry you saw those texts. One, because Sasha doesn't think highly of me, as you probably noticed. Two, because she texts like a middle school girl. Did you ever talk with that reporter? That Johnson woman? No, of course not. Someone else must have done it, although I don't know who. Did you get to have a drink with Jack? I wish I had been able to. I'm far too busy for that kind of thing. I haven't seen Jack in, oh, six months. You could make an effort. He misses you, Dad. I'm no fun to pal around with anymore. Well, there's your phone back then. Glad I could return it to its rightful owner. I am too. Imagine the field day that Johnson woman would have if she got a hold of this. I'll let you get back to work. Sometimes I imagine the trains that ran over those tracks. I think about all the places they went with their freight cars full of frozen fish. How many people ate striped bass from Avid's Landing and didn't ever know it? Summer, you can see mud crabs crawling up the sides of those things. Sometimes the gulls pick them off. It's Merle's birthday in two weeks. Maybe Vi and I should bring her out here as a present. We're so lucky to find this. No one else ever hangs out on this side of Pillar, so we can pretty much put whatever we want here. And besides, 
We never leave anything valuable. Hey, stop pawing through my stuff. Hey, can I look at the papers you hid next to your sweatshirt? Those? Why? I'm looking for parts of Dad's old diary. Oh, so you found parts of it lying around too? Yeah, it's fine, I guess. I found these papers tucked into one of the academic journals he was reading. He left it right out in the living room, so seems like any of us could read it now if we wanted to. There's some weird shit in there, though. I hope you're prepared for what you find. Yeah, I know. Dad was planning on running errands this afternoon. Maybe now would be a good time to see if I can poke around his office. I've brought Jacob here a few times. I, I haven't told Vi yet, though. Not sure how she'd react. Indian strawberries grow here in the summertime. I used to eat them, but they don't taste like anything. They look so ripe and red, but inside, nothing. Hey, Vi. I came out here to be alone. You came out here to smoke, you mean? So what if I did? Sorry. I didn't mean... But you know it's bad for you. Well, duh. It feels good, though. Warm. To have this hot air in your lungs. It, it's... Relaxing. Did you see the paper this morning? I'm not blind. Of course I saw it. And I read it against my better judgment. What did you think? I wish the media would stop harping on us. There's no new information, so what's the point? At least there aren't news trucks parked outside anymore. Jesus, I know. I guess I'm glad they remember that she's still missing, but we're not zoo animals. I wonder if maybe Dad did have something to do with it. Dad's harmless most of the time. He doesn't even know how to change the oil in the car or how to kill a snake that gets indoors, much less other stuff. I'm not saying he killed her. I'm just not saying he didn't kill her. A morning dove. How do you know? I remember it. From that book Dad gave me for my eighth birthday, remember? I had a CD to go along with it. With samples of songs from all kinds of North American birds. Chickadee, cedar waxwing, northern pintail, barn owl. Morning Dove. I do remember that thing. We were obsessed. I was always so mad that you didn't let me listen to the CD whenever I wanted. It was something I had that you didn't. Not too surprising when you think about it. Do you remember how we used to think we could understand the birds?
Yeah, we were such weird kids. Running around in the woods and talking to birds, trying to get our crazy ass mother to pay attention to us. Yeah, we were weird. So, how's your boyfriend? What, what do you, what do you mean? Oh, come on. Don't play coy with me. He's not just your friend, is he? He's... Um... Okay, sorry for teasing. I know you and Jacob have been friends for the longest time, but... You went to homecoming together, right? And didn't you all go on a date right before Christmas break started? We went on a date. But it was sort of strange. I mean, we've known each other since we were three, so it was hard to think about it going anywhere. So, do you like him? With mom gone, I can't even think about that. Does mom being gone stop you from having relationships with other people? Because, look, I know I'm not always responding to this stuff in the best way, but neither are you. It doesn't stop me, it just limits things. Lena, you should think about what you're going to do if you can't ever find the answer you want. Coming from you? That was actually really smart. All right. Keep your chin up. And try to think about something else. Kittens, puppies, cute boys, whatever. Violet, would you know anything about how to get into Dad's office? Look, I can't just tell you how to break in. That goes against my principles. Your principles? Yeah, honor among thieves. Or something. Go talk to Marl about it, okay? I found this. You went through my drawers? You bitch! Excuse me? What? Did you think I was just going to roll over and be all, Oh, Lena, I'm so sorry. Don't tell on me, please. I thought you'd take it better than this. Well, you made a mistake then, didn't you? Okay, let's try this again. I didn't want to make you angry, and I'm not going to tell anyone or try to get you punished. I'm just worried about you. All right. I appreciate that. But before I say anything else, will you tell me why you were snooping through my stuff? I was looking for answers about mom. And you thought you'd find those in my desk because... They could be anywhere. <laughs> You're crazy. Joking. Mostly. Okay, I'm sorry. I think you get that. Are we good now? Will you tell me how you managed to get your hands on this? Yeah, we're good. Sorry, I wasn't really angry, just surprised. My friend Sophie's older brother bought it for me. He charged me 30 bucks. It probably wasn't worth that much, but I wanted some. You just wanted some because... Say whatever you want, but I like the feeling of being buzzed. It takes the edge off all the other things I'm thinking. And when I play the violin that way, I sound... different. Freer. When did you start doing this? The consumption of illegal substances thing, you mean? Sophie first let me try a few beers last March, but I didn't like them very much. Then one night, we were out in the park last summer. Maddie pulled a water bottle of vodka out of her bag. It was disgusting. We didn't realize we were supposed to mix it with anything, but... Man, that feeling. 
that hot burn on the back of the throat. I liked that. After that, we figured out that Sophie's brother would slip us stuff if we were nice to him. He's an asshole with a disgusting neck beard, but he's a 21-year-old asshole. So, you know, beggars can't be choosers, as Dad always says. Are you being careful? You mean, am I binge drinking every night? Well, don't you think you would have noticed? I'm not an alcoholic. Just be careful. So you want a drink? Come on, let's toast. No thanks. <laughs> All right, suit yourself. And Lena, stop snooping through my stuff. How long have you been keeping these watercolors? I've been stashing them away ever since mom disappeared. You know how it was. She would leave them everywhere, so I just started picking them up. One from the living room, one from her bedside table, one from the volunteer desk at the park. They're really bad about locking that door, by the way. I didn't realize you liked her paintings. Yeah, well, it's not so much that I'm an art freak. More that I like touching this paper and knowing that she touched it, too. It reminds me of her. I know, that's sentimental of me. Uh, well... Oh, shut up. Why do you keep them out here? Doesn't the weather trash them? I keep them in that hollow so they don't fall apart, but yes, a little bit. You can see where the water damage is. I actually prefer it that way, though. The environment is leaving its mark on her work. Complicating it. Deepening it. I wonder what mom would think of her paintings ending up like this. I feel like she'd prefer it this way. It's not like she ever sold or displayed her work. That's not why she painted. So, which one is your favorite? I like the coffee mug and flowers. Hmm. I thought you might. So, are you gonna give them back now, or what? Yes, of course. Thanks. I'll talk to you later, okay? If you keep going down the walkway, you'll get closer to Uncle Thomas's house. When Vi and I lived there this year, I would sneak down here sometimes. I've never really snuck out before, but sometimes I just wanted to pretend like none of this past year was happening. Hey Gus, would you know anything about how to get into Dad's office? Um, no. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Merle, can I ask you a strange question? And can you not tell Dad that I asked you this? Well, sure, I guess. Do you have the lost key to get into Dad's office? Why do you need that? I'm trying to figure out why Dad has been acting so strangely. Dad always acts strange. Yeah, but I thought... Maybe looking around could help me understand why he's been so strange this past year in particular. I guess that makes sense. But I don't get why you're always trying so hard to understand people. Alright, I have the key. Wait, you really do? How did you even get the key? Easy. I was up early on a Monday morning reading a book so I could fill in the reading journal that Miss Prescott makes us do. Merle. Sorry, i just forgotten to read for an hour that weekend, and we have to write down the exact time we started and stopped and what we read about. 
so I couldn't just make it up. Anyway, I saw Dad come out of his office to leave for work. He closed and locked the door and tried to put the key in his back pocket. But instead of staying there, it slipped down onto the floor. It didn't make any sounds because the carpet muffled it. So I went to go pick it up. Bet you're all surprised. Why didn't you give it back? Because then I wouldn't be able to explore. I wanted to look around some, duh. Fair enough. So, can I have the key? Yeah, sure. And you can keep it. I'm done playing spy. There's a knot hole in one of the trees on the beach here. It's like the one that Scout and Jem find in To Kill a Mockingbird, which I actually liked reading. Gus let me take that book before he needed to finish it for school. Anyway, I like the idea of doing things Scout would have done, so I put the key in the knot hole to see if it would mysteriously disappear. But I've been checking all the time. It's still there. Thanks, Mo. Seriously. You could give me an extra dessert after dinner tonight. We'll see about that. I'm going to go, okay? But I'll come talk to you again later. Taking random stuff out of tree knots. I guess this makes me Boo Radley. Well, sometimes I do feel like I'm living in a book. It's so messy. This smells like Chinese takeout. Look, there's even a fortune cookie slip down in the cushion cracks. Never get involved in a land war in Asia? Hmm. Receipts from the dry cleaners, a coupon to the barbers, a list of overdue library books. He's had the complete single mother checked out for three months? Maybe they didn't have a complete single father. I haven't been in here for so long that it just seemed like another place. Like stepping through the wardrobe into Narnia, but it's just a room. I knew he slept down here, but I didn't realize he had just the one blanket. It's so... thin. There it is. Another part of Dad's journal. Risperdal. I've never heard of that before. I wonder if Violet knows Dad is taking these. I have 
kind of a weird question. Have you ever heard of a drug called Risperdal? Oh, so you took a look around the office, read the journal he keeps on his desk. Pretty fucked up, right? I was waiting for you to do it. <laughs> Wait, you know about all this? Of course. I've been picking the lock for months. There are YouTube videos on how to do it. All you need is a $15 lock picking set from Amazon. So it was you who picked the lock on that science teacher workroom that one time? Yeah, that was me. I needed the answers to Mr. Stevens' chemistry quiz he was giving the next day, but I still failed it. <clears throat> Back to the whole whispered all thing. Yeah, it's for schizophrenia. I looked it up. Wait. You... you mean he... Dad has... Yep. I always thought he was just... strange. Peculiar. Are you sure he... Yeah, I did a lot of research. The med is used to treat schizophrenia, mainly. Although it can also be used to treat bipolar disorder and irritability in people who have autism. Dad doesn't have autism, and I've never known him to have highs and lows like with bipolar disorder. But schizophrenia? That fits. What is Risperdal, though? What does it do? I don't know too much in the grand scheme of things. I'm no doctor, obviously, but I'll tell you what I'm sure of. Risperdal is an antipsychotic. That means it treats symptoms like hearing voices, delusions, hallucinations, scrambled speech. That kind of thing. All kinds of memories started seeming different when I was looking this stuff up. Like, remember when we were little? I was five, maybe, and you were six. And Dad wouldn't leave the house for a few days because he said everyone in town could hear his thoughts. That everyone would know what a terrible person he was. Mom finally took him to the doctor. She told us that Dad had had a very bad fever and had hallucinated. That's called thought broadcasting, by the way. I read about it. But what was in Dad's journal? He clearly still believes that. About Mom being some kind of supernatural creature? How could all 18 years of that be a delusion? I don't know. It would be pretty abnormal from what I've read. Most delusions seem to last anywhere from a week to a year. 18 years. It would be weird. But how else do you explain this? You can't think that that's the truth. His schizophrenia could have gotten better over the years. Maybe the Risperdal is new, and it helped him manage in ways other meds didn't. Or maybe he's just been veering from one kind of a pill to another, and none of them have really worked. And he spent his entire life seeing a world that isn't even there. It's really sad if you think about it. I just didn't realize how much help he needed. I guess none of us did. So, what are you gonna do now that you know all this? I'm going to make sure he gets on the right track. In terms of mental health, I mean. You're a better person than I am. I just can't care that much. Not after everything else he's done. But before you do that, I want you to have this. It's the key to the chest in his closet. You know, the one where we used to try and pry it open when we played hide and seek. The one dad got so mad about us touching that he put us in time out every time he caught us in there. I remember the one. It was behind that panel. We thought it was a secret hideout. He dropped this key on the back porch a little more than a year ago. It took me a week to figure out what it went to. God, I was obsessed with finding out what it unlocked. Then I realized. When I looked, I found something in the chest. I... I showed it to Mom. What did you find? It was... You're not gonna believe me. Okay. 
It was a feather robe. Like the kind Dad described in his diary. Except I don't want you to take that as proof that it's true. It was just a robe. Beautiful, though. So intricate. I... I put it on before I showed it to Mom. I felt... Well, never mind. Where is the robe now? It's gone. Wherever Mom went, I... I think she took it with her. How come you didn't tell me this before? Honestly, I don't know. I could give you some the time wasn't right bullshit. I just didn't know how to say it. It was so strange what I found. I'm going to go take a look. Thank you, Vi. This is all a lot to take in, but I'm going to figure it out, I promise you. <laughs> I never doubted that for a second. Oh, Lena. I want to understand what I just saw. I want there to be a logical explanation that can make you look better than what this looks like. I wish I could explain it. But you can't, can you? I try so hard to let all your little quirks go because that's what I'm supposed to do because they're what make you, you, my father. But this isn't a quirk. This is a delusion. Wait, please. Don't come to premature conclusions. This isn't the way I intended you to find out. Did you want to keep this a secret forever then? Yes, but no, I, of course I wanted to tell you, but how could I possibly find the moment? I was so ashamed. The kind of shame, I mean, that crawls into all the pores of your skin. Does that feeling sound familiar to you? No, I've never felt that way. Good. I hope you never do. I would wish that kind of shame on any of my children. Will you at least tell me how you knew to look here? Vi told me. She knew about the chest. She'd found it before Mom disappeared. Your sister? So she knows that I... But how? I suppose it doesn't matter, does it? I'm beginning to get the feeling that the four of you understand more than I realized. You're very observant. All of you. But I guess that should make me proud. I see you have my journal. Did you read it? All of it. Yes, I did. <laughs> At least you're honest about it. I don't think I can fault you for reading it. I would have done the same thing. I want you to tell me. Here, now, without thinking about it or rereading the diary? What happened? You have a right to ask that. 
but if you're hoping I'm going to recant what I wrote in that diary, you're mistaken. I'm not sure how aware you are of the way I've struggled all my life with my mental health. You probably knew or guessed that I was different from other children's fathers, but I don't know if you realized how different I... I, I know I don't talk about it much, because I didn't want you to realize that your father once heard and saw things he couldn't explain. That he would sometimes become convinced of things that couldn't be true. It's been a lifelong process, working with therapists and trying different combinations of medications to try and treat my delusions, but I swear, I swear, it's manageable now. Whatever problems you had aren't important. Maybe. Any problem that affects you is important. But I've tried so hard not to let that part of myself become the part you recognize. Lena, I want to ask you something now. I know we never talked about it. To be frank, I've never talked about it with any of you. But please... Please tell me you believe I didn't harm your mother in any way. Didn't harm her? No, you did, I think. You stole her robe. But I know you didn't kill her or anything. I didn't mean that I never... <sighs> All right. I understand your point. I do think she's gone, though. I can't believe she was a swan maiden, Dad. I just can't. What do you think, then? Do you really want to hear it? I would always be curious, otherwise. I think she went to start a new life for herself somewhere else. A life separate from you and us. Well, after all this... You have the entire story at your fingertips. It's your right to make a decision about what you think, even if it's what I know to be incorrect. Yes, it is my right. Then I suppose that now I can ask whether you'll ever forgive me for the way I've treated you and your siblings, for consistently hiding parts of my life from you and leaving the four of you alone so that I could retreat into my work. And ignoring you when you needed me most. I was trying to think of how to have that sort of discussion with you, but I was too much of a coward to do it. Now that you forced my hand, no, no, I, sh I shouldn't say it that way. What, what am I thinking? Dad. Now that everything else is out in the open, I'm telling you, I want to do better. And I'm hoping you can forget about all the mistakes I've made. I... yes. I forgive you. Oh, thank God. I... Thank you, Lena. We got over it eventually, Lena and I. The diary, the chest, everything. Even though she said she forgave me, it wasn't until April that she really trusted me again. And I understand that, I, I do. That day in January when I saw her there in my room, I realized then how much I'd forced her to carry. After she graduated in June, she turned down her acceptance from the University of Chicago. I told her to think about it hard, but she just smiled gently and told me she wanted to stay closer to home anyway. She's taking classes at a community college now in psychology. She told me she wants to be a grief counselor someday. Wasn't what I'd envisioned for her, but I'm, I'm very proud. Back in January, she told me she thought her mother had left us 
I argued with her then because I was lonely and I was tired. I try to remember the days when I met Vivian. They seem hazy, like a heat barrage. Whatever the case, I've realized since then that I was loved. To think of how I came to be loved is perhaps to miss the point. I don't know what happened to my wife. None of us do, and I don't think we ever will. But we've filled that emptiness with each other. Maybe, just maybe, that will be enough.